When the U.S. Navy first embarked on the Lataro combat ship program in the early 2000s, it did so with the ambitious goal of producing a fleet of smaller, agile, and highly adaptable vessels. These ships were intended to operate close to shore in the Lataro zones where traditional larger warships might struggle. In concept, the Lataro combat ship, or LCS, was designed to be modular and versatile, capable of executing a range of missions, from anti-submarine warfare to surface combat countering small boats to mine countermeasures. The Independence class, one of two designs selected for production alongside Lockheed Martin's Freedom class, evolved from a commercial theory concept. Also, USA adapted the trimaran hull of its high-speed commercial express ferry for naval service, producing a ship that prioritized speed, stability, and payload volume. The resulting vessels, such as the lead ship, Independence, and her sister ships, offered impressive design specifications on paper. 127 meters in length, a 31.6 meter beam, and a displacement ranging from 2,377 tons light to over 3,200 tons at full load. Their shallow draft and aluminium hull allowed for high speed transit and access to shallower ports, with a whopping top speed of 44 knots. A flight deck capable of supporting two SH-60 Seahawk helicopters or multiple UAVs extended their operational reach. But from the beginning, the program faced profound challenges. Cost overruns were severe. Independence itself ended up costing over $700 million in 2009 money, more than three times the original projection. Scheduled delays were frequent, and construction revealed a multitude of deficiencies during initial inspections. The modular mission concept, though innovative, proved operationally cumbersome. Changing mission modules, originally envisioned as a rapid, ports-based process, often took days or sometimes even weeks. Systems integration issues further hampered the ship's combat effectiveness. Operationally, both the Independence and the Freedom class ships displayed significant limitations. The emphasis on speed and lightweight construction means they lacked robust survivability features. Critical systems were vulnerable to flooding, and the Navy's own testing acknowledged that, in high threat scenarios, the crew might need to abandon ship, a requirement few other U.S. Navy ships would face. The Freedom class was plagued by mechanically complex combining gear linking gas turbines and diesel engines, a system responsible for multiple high-profile breakdowns. Both classes were very gas-hungry, consuming fuel at rates that restricted operational range and speed. Even basic survivability systems, such as small-caliber guns and missile defenses, were minimal compared to larger surface combatants. Corrosion and hull cracking plagued the Independence class, with 6 of 13 ships experiencing structural issues above the waterline, as recently as 2022. Yet, despite these setbacks, the LCS program persisted. Political support in Congress and lobbying by contractors ensured continued production, while the Navy attempted to extract utility from these ships. By the mid-2010s, the program had been scaled back, and some vessels were repurposed as training ships. Critics often describe the ships as floating boxes, or worse, little crappy ships, citing persistent mechanical failures, unreliable construction materials, reliance on expensive contractors to do maintenance, and mission limitations. Lifetime costs of the program were projected to reach $100 billion or more for fewer than 30 ships capable of only limited operations. Against this backdrop of challenges, 
the Navy sought ways to realize at least one core capability promised by the LCS design, mine countermeasures. For the U.S. Navy, mine warfare is an enduring vulnerability. Naval mines have historically been a cost-effective means for adversaries to deny access to critical waterways, choke points, and the Taro regions. From the Persian Gulf to the South China Sea, modern minefields can threaten carrier strike groups, amphibious task forces, and high-value logistics vessels alike. Yet, mine countermeasure capability for the U.S. Navy has lagged, with older systems aging and the sole class of minesweepers, the Avenger class, being gradually retired. The modular nature of the LCS design provided an opportunity to address this gap. The mission bay of the Independence class, measuring over 15,000 square feet, can accommodate a wide range of mission packages, unmanned vehicles, and equipment. Recognizing this potential, the Navy invested in developing a dedicated mine countermeasure mission package, capable of transforming the Independence class into a highly capable mine countermeasure platform. It's worth noting, though, that so far, this effort has only been successful for the Independence class, with the Freedom class remaining very much in the limbo in terms of tangible military value. The LCS Mine Countermeasure Mission Package integrates three core components. Unmanned surface vessels, unmanned underwater vehicles, and airborne mine hunting sensors, all orchestrated by central mission control system. Unmanned surface vehicles, or USVs, act as remote platforms that deploy side-scan sonar, acoustic sensors, and neutralization equipment without putting sailors at risk. Complementing them, unmanned underwater vehicles, or UUVs, can detect and classify mines at depth, providing precise targeting data. The airborne component, often using helicopters equipped with dipping sonar and other mine detection sensors, extends the ship's operational reach and offers rapid area coverage. Crucially, the mine countermeasure package is designed to be largely plug and play. The Independence class can transition between standard patrol or surface warfare configurations to mine countermeasure operations in a fraction of the time it would take a traditional vessel. This flexibility represents a significant departure from the early vision of interchangeable mission modules, which had been criticized for logistical and operational inefficiencies. The Navy has streamlined crewing for these operations, deploying a core crew supplemented by specialized operators for unmanned systems, ensuring that the ship can maintain operational readiness while retaining the ability to deploy rapidly. From a systems perspective, the mine countermeasure package leverages advances in unmanned technology, automation, and networked command and control. The integrated combat management system allows real-time coordination between multiple vehicles and sensors, consolidating sonar returns, electro-optical data, and navigation feeds into a single operational picture. This fusion of data enables the crew to make rapid, informed decisions on mine detection, classification, and neutralization. Additionally, the Independence class's large mission bay provides the physical capacity to carry additional payloads, such as extra UUVs, expendable neutralization devices, or small vehicles for logistical support. Operational testing has shown the promise of this configuration. Exercises have demonstrated the ability of the Independence class, outfitted with the mine warfare package, to do the job of mine clearing basically as intended. Unlike legacy mine sweeping ships, which rely heavily on slow manual operations and limited coverage areas, the LCS can deploy multiple unmanned systems simultaneously, 
covering larger areas more quickly and reducing risk to personnel. In contested or littoral environments, where mines could threaten critical access points or choke points, this capability provides a tangible improvement to the Navy's operational flexibility. The mine countermeasure upgrade also addresses one of the broader criticisms of the LCS program, mission relevance. While earlier roles, such as anti-submarine warfare or high-end surface combat, proved problematic due to design limitations, mine countermeasure operations align closely with the ship's inherent strengths. Shallow draft, high speed, and large payload capacity make the Independence class well-suited to navigate contested coastal waters while deploying unmanned systems. In this context, the LCS is no longer a floating box, but a platform with demonstrable utility, capable of performing a mission the US Navy has historically struggled to resource effectively. Looking forward, the focus on mine sweeping allows the Navy to extract real value from an otherwise controversial program. While other planned roles for the LCS remain limited or cancelled, the mine countermeasure capability provides an operational niche where the ships can contribute meaningfully to fleet readiness and littoral access. It also demonstrates the potential for modular designs to be adapted to specific mission needs, even when initial ambitions exceed technical realities. However, it is important to note that the Independence class cannot perform mine countermeasure missions alone. When operating close to contested littoros, these ships will remain highly vulnerable to air and missile attack. Their defensive armament, centered on the sea ram and small caliber guns, is not sufficient to counter high-end threats. In practice, an LCS outfitted for mine sweeping will require the protection of larger escorts, such as Ale Brook class destroyers, which can provide area air defense, long range strikes, and layered protection. Ironically, the Independence class LCS functions less as an independent combatant and more as a specialized tool within a larger task force enabling destroyers and other high-value units to operate safely. The story of the Independence class LCS is one of both setbacks and success, and one of ups and downs. The program's early years were defined by technical immaturity, cost overruns, and operational shortcomings. Crews struggled with mechanical failures, untested systems, and missions the ships were not fully equipped to perform. Yet, the Navy's investment in mine countermeasure upgrades represents a turning point. In this specialized role, the Independence class can finally deliver on a core promise, enhancing the Navy's ability to operate in contested littoral environments, clearing mines that could otherwise threaten access to vital maritime choke points. The LCS may never be the versatile surface combatants originally envisioned, nor the answer to high-end naval warfare. But in the area of mine countermeasures, a domain of persistent strategic vulnerability, the independence class offers a tangible capability. By leveraging its flexible mission bay, the LCS can now contribute to fleet operations in a way that mitigates risk, expands operational reach, and addresses a long-standing deficiency in U.S. naval power. In essence, after nearly two decades of criticism and controversy, the Independence Class LCS has finally found a place where it can be truly useful. The Navy has transformed a total basket case of a platform into a force multiplier in the fight against naval mines. Yet, questions remain over whether the technology will perform reliably in real-world conditions. 
and whether the Navy can sustain these ships through the long and technically demanding process of mine clearance. The LCS looks more promising in this niche than in others, but its ultimate success will depend on how well the mine warfare package matures and whether the Navy can actually integrate it into fleet operations smoothly.